completes all evaluations. We thank you for your cooperation. As a Dark Souls cultist, I was singularly offended by From Software's decision to make a different game. The only medium worse than anime is mech anime, but I have an open mind. Between the targeting mechanic I'd already mastered and the FPS skills I'd been developing for 20 years, switching from melee combat in a medieval environment to ranged combat in a futuristically urban environment was nothing beyond a slight adjustment. Apart from the typically excellent balanced gameplay, Armored Core 6 is overwhelmingly addicting more than anything else. Once you create a build that plays to your strengths, and decide how you're going to finish the rest of the game, the controller becomes much harder to put down. There are up to four weapons to use simultaneously, so there's plenty of room for creativity as you develop or commit to a favorable strategy. Armored Core 6 wasn't what I expected, and I was concerned that I wasn't foaming at the mouth over the next From Software game. Ultimately, the game is lots of fun, not only because it's challenging and engaging in its own right, but there are also many endearing ways in which it's comparable to Dark Souls. Surprisingly, giant robots don't move the way people do. This bulkiness likely informs the intentional input lag that requires greater deliberation. While low acceleration limits planner movement, armored cores owe flexible vertical movement to jetpacks that allow users to fly in any direction for a short time. The integration of jumping, hovering, or otherwise defying gravity with skillful combat certainly separates Armored Core from the usual From Software greats, but once you understand how the game works, hovering above enemies to assist with dodging joins your arsenal seamlessly. Not only can the weight of your mech's parts limit or increase mobility, but different types of legs present unique cocktails of benefits and constraints. Regular legs offer the most dependable planner movement, but players can also equip grasshopper legs to jump higher, or tetrapods to increase poise and allow for genuine hovering. Using tanks for legs offers the most poise and supports the most weight, but as someone with a mom like yours can imagine, it restricts movement most significantly. Okay, I'm done talking about legs, folks. That was really creepy. As massive as mechs may seem to those unfamiliar with the franchise, ACs don't seem like giants in the mythically massive world of Rubicon. As uncharacteristically linear as Armored Core 6 is in comparison to other From Software titles, there's plenty of space to explore within each level. At first, combat made me feel like a coked-up lemur wielding a saucepan and a nerf gun. Is this a good feeling? Well, it would be if I were crashing a kindergartner's birthday party, but it's really frustrating when I'm picking fights with giant helicopters. In combination with general navigational mechanics, the build with which to begin the game doesn't optimize mobility. Favoring balance, at most, you have a melee weapon in your offhand, an automatic rifle in your dominant hand, and a missile launcher on your shoulder. At least for me, this was a lot to be using so immediately, though I imagine the development team had wanted to show players what their options were. As FD as melee attacks are, the melee weapon requires some adjustment because to attack is to launch yourself toward the enemy and strike. A melee attack is a massive, deliberate move that opens ACs to incoming damage. Melee weapons also have sizable cooldowns, so if your build includes a melee weapon, melee attacks will only be occasional trump cards. The tutorial made me feel like I owed my success to luck. In my primatological state, I sustained many hits from veritable kindergartners and tried my best, but I didn't understand what was happening well enough to say I had planned anything. Among the first weapons to unlock is the Ludlow SMG, a weapon that isn't so good on its own, but if you dual wield SMGs, the game will become very easy. I'm paraphrasing, of course. Discarding the initial build in favor of Akimbo SMGs switched the mood from incompetent monkey to, well, a giant robot wielding two giant SMGs. In a world where many AAA games want you to use as many mechanics as possible, Armored Core 6 is one of those ARPGs that's all about honing a single build for dealing with as many different scenarios as possible. Shortly, I'll talk more about the nuts and bolts of accessorizing. I didn't expect great enemies, but the diversity is there. Mostly, you must fight different types of MTs, or primitive military vehicles, which are cannon fodder. Sometimes you fight other ACs whose capabilities rival yours, and, of course, bosses will challenge you with capabilities that exceed or differ from yours. I thought bosses might merit their own section in this video, but all you need to know is that when the game is challenging, an AC in a level or a boss is always the culprit. Otherwise, the game is pretty manageable, and it's not long in the first place, ultimately enhancing replayability. To tell you the truth, Armored Core 6 isn't very hard, especially in comparison to other From Software games. In fact, it's one of those games that's so easy it actually offends you whenever you die. 
Being sneaky when you're the size of a building might seem impossible, but Armored Core 6 takes place in a world where everyone is a giant robot at comparatively greater distances from each other. If nobody is subtle, everyone is. There's a superficial stealth mechanic in the sense that enemies have unaware and aware states. There are specific cases for using stealth, but only one level forces you to be stealthy and stealth is optional for the rest of the game. If there were multiple stealth levels, they'd be too frustrating. Feel free to use stealth for an ambush, but don't rely on a methodical sweep of stealth kills to beat levels. In terms of momentum, enemy diversity pulls most weight, and AC's greater mobility causes environments to take a back seat. The main strength of level design is diversity of objectives. Again, there's the sneaky level, there's the level where beacons help you navigate through fog, and there's the one where you must obtain as much data as possible, avoiding skirmishes entirely. Though Armored Core is linear on the surface, the game feels like more of a Metroidvania. In the lobby, you can select levels, shop for parts, and upgrade your mech. Sounds like a bonfire to me. Though levels are in chronological order, old levels are replayable. Sometimes you may complete a set of three or four levels in any order. Certain levels called decisions cancel each other out, each of them yielding a distinct mission arc upon completion. Many of these decisions boil down to knowing who's weak enough to betray. One option is usually much more difficult than the other. Decisions often reminded me of those times in Dark Souls when you can technically pick a fight with an NPC who's way out of your league. In further alignment with Dark Souls, Shai Halud over here requires you to fight with a specific weapon. Remember using the Storm Ruler to kill Yorm? That was fun, right? Right? There's also more to the game than missions. Completing optional tutorials, unlocks certain gear, and actually teaches helpful concepts, such as how to pilot mechs with tanks or tetrapods for legs. Finally, these simulations include an arena that presents 30 1v1 battles with other ACs. Some ACs are bosses, and others are more of your equal. Almost comically, the narrative juxtaposes ominous lore full of flowery comparisons to fire with the aggressive barking of a drill sergeant. For a game with no human character models, Armored Core owes its pretty fun narrative to characters who contrast strongly against each other. In later playthroughs, there's a character with whom you can have a rivalry, which involves you periodically humiliating him, and he keeps coming back for more. If allies don't become bosses, they definitely keep secrets that they don't reveal until the end of the game. The exciting story puts you in the center of a war among half a dozen corporations, and you decide which faction prevails. Whether a game's narrative is any good doesn't depend on the intrinsic quality of the narrative. It depends on the narrative's ability to outline the player's purpose, or give the player as many opportunities to impact the narrative as possible. Whatever you think of dime a dozen weeb mech lore, Armored Core 6 hits the nail on the head with regard to player agency. From Software environments are all about feeling small and isolated in a sprawling, dangerous world. Rubicon presents some of the most surreal, incomprehensible differences in size I've thought about in my life. If regular humans designed buildings big enough for the giant robots to navigate freely, then how big are the buildings? Do they have their own gravitational pull? Are any of these buildings the size of your mom? Building the environment is important because it establishes the eerily gargantuan world of Rubicon and sets the stage for a high-stakes narrative to decide the fate of the disembodied Rubiconians and their relationship with human colonists. But the appearance of the mechs is also important because they're totally badass, badass weapons, badass armor. Enjoy the minutest customization I've ever seen in a video game. Be purple, be shiny, be camouflaged. Your Gundam will look so cool that if you show it to people, they will be more than happy to let you keep your virginity. During 621's journey from harmless errant pilot to ominous cosmic force, character progression is nothing beyond purchasing or finding parts with which to expand the inventory. Abandoning direct control over stat distribution entirely, Armored Core offers a more complex gear mechanic within which everything you add to your build gives and takes. If you want to dodge more effectively, you need to shed a few pounds. If you shed a few pounds by opting for a sleeker, faster chassis, you have to increase energy for additional thrust, but if you have bigger legs, you can carry more. So, you can either equip big legs to sacrifice speed in favor of equip load, or equip smaller frames to increase speed at the cost of more energy. The only aspect of progression that isn't gear is this catalog of skills that accepts points you specifically earn in the arena. If you complete the arena, you just unlock every skill in the catalog, so your strategy is essentially the gear you equip. With four distinct weapon slots, four gear slots, and four trinket slots, for lack of a better term, you'll spend up to half your time strategizing within these menus. There are no upgrades or possible adjustments to any gear in the game, so prepare to use your brain a little bit.
Armored Core 6 handles New Game Plus in a way that's way too effective for me to skip in this video. After the credits, the next mission in the menu is the first one after the tutorial, so there's no way to run out of missions. New Game Plus also throws in a few advancements that aren't there during the first playthrough, including further arena challenges and alterations to certain levels. As I'm near the beginning of my third playthrough, I'm not sure there are any differences after the second playthrough, but I'm having a lot of fun anyway. I've noticed that completing New Game Plus endlessly is stressful and bad for my headspace, but one or two extra tries with new content in the mix isn't going to drive anyone crazy. I think what I like most about New Game Plus and From Software games is becoming more effective at vanquishing bosses as quickly as possible. There's something so satisfying about leaning into some perspiration to cream something twice your size. I'm so turned off by mech anime that I'll watch Pacific Rim before thinking about watching Evangelion. Itotaka Miyazaki's departure from his usual bullshit to make a linear space age game is pretty refreshing. Mechs end up being such a good medium for the famous targeting mechanic, no wonder there were six of these. While Souls 3 and Sekiro are my favorites, I wouldn't mind further editions of this pseudo-intellectual property about giant robots blowing each other sky high with missiles, lasers, and so on. Don't force your children to defend the planet from angels, and I'll see you in a couple weeks.